Hi, I'm Michelle LeBlanc. I'm a coach with OutRival Racing and QT2 Systems. And OutRival Racing has been the official coach of Ironman Texas the last three years. This uh, video here is an overview of the Ironman Texas run course. I'm going to show you some footage of the actual run course and then also give some tips and pointers that um, hopefully will help you have a better day um, at Ironman Texas, specifically on the run course. I'm going to use a video that Corey Oliver of Brittany Louise Photography took a few years ago. He went out on the run course on his bike and filmed the course. So it's a little bit bumpy, um, but that's okay. It's a, it's a great video that just shows you what the course looks like. And then as we go, I'm going to point out just some, some different some intricacies on the course and then also give you some overall tips um, that hopefully you will learn something from and just have a better race day. All right, here we go, let's start. So I'm using the YouTube video that Corey Oliver took a few years ago. Here is the um, course itself, and let me just pause it here just to tell you just a few, uh, some details about this course. It is a three loop course, um, or actually two and then two thirds because you actually exit the, the course over here a little bit before you start. So Town Green Park starts right here. This is transition area. And then you head out on the run course. You do a little out and back and then through parking lots. And then you do this loop a second time. And then on the third time around, once you get to this section right here, you actually veer off and then go to the finish line. So it's almost a three loop course. It's pancake flat. Um, except for two little bridge overpasses, or well, one bridge overpass and then one little dirt section that feels like a flight of stairs. But other than that, flat, flat, flat. Um, it's hot, hot and humid. It is one of the most brutal Ironman courses out there. Um, even though on paper it doesn't look that bad, it's because um, our humidity can be deceptively challenging. Um, the humidity on a couple of the years at the start has been 90 to 100 percent, even though the temperature has been 85, which doesn't sound that bad unless you um, know how bad humidity humidity can be. In 2017, it's moving back to April, so hopefully it will be a little bit cooler. But even in April, we can have um, some pretty hot and humid days, or hot and humid days. Um, and in April, we tend to have more winds than we do as we progress through May. So we could have a little bit of wind in April, um, whereas we haven't, I don't think, ever seen wind the last five years here at Ironman, Texas. I live here in the woodlands, so I know this course very well, all too well, honestly. Um, so feel free to email me at the end of the at the end of this presentation, I give you my email. If you have any specific questions about the run course, feel free to ask. Um, you can contact me directly off of our website. All right. There are nine aid stations to the to each loop, um, and there's been construction somewhere along this course each year. So they've had to alter the course every single year to just um, accommodate that construction. Don't let this elevation map fool you. It is flat. So if you look at the scale on the left, it's a very small scale. So this course is flat, flat, flat. Here are just some average temperatures. Again, if you look at that mean temperature, um, this is just for 2012. Um, but if you look kind of across the board, the average temperature is in the mid 80s at the third week of May. It's just humid. All right, so here we go. We're headed out from Town Green Park. We're onto the what we call the waterway here. Um, nice, large, open section. Um, lots of people here, lots of music, lots of craziness in this section. There'll be loud music and people in bikinis and drinking beer. Here's the little flight of stairs. It's actually worse than it looks there on video. Um, you might as well power walk up it. It can be, it's pretty steep. The first mile here, you're running through parking lots. Tip number one would be to definitely, after you get off the bike, actually tip number one is to not overbike to make sure that you pace properly and knowing that you have a marathon to come. The biggest mistake we see in Ironman across the board is that people overbike and then take out too fast right here in the first mile. A station number one is right here to the left. Make sure you get cool. So tip number two would be to get cool, get ice in your cap, get fluids in your body, get your core temperature down. The, when we head down Lake Woodlands, we have a, both a pathway off to the left, as you can see, and then we have a shoulder. Corey wasn't able to get um, every time onto the shoulder here because he's going against oncoming traffic when he was filming this. Um, but here, you'll be, actually be racing off to the left there on the pathway. And then for the most part, you'll otherwise be, um, actually, no, I'm sorry, you'll be on the road here 
for most of this section. One year they took a section onto the pathway for whatever reason. Um, by and large, you're on the road. Right here, you can call for your special needs bag. You've entered what we call North Shore Park, which is the race starts. And you're going to come in the section and make one big circle. So as you enter, the sec as you enter this um, park, you'll call out if you want your special needs bags. Um, if you want any nutrition, you can only get that bag once. So um, even though you see this three times, you can only request that bag once. You run through here. There will be a lot of people in here cheering for you. This is a great place for your family and friends to come see you because they can see you a couple times. Then right here, special needs. Get what you need, get what you need, and then you're back on the course. We actually, you're back on the road on this section, um, which Corey will hop on the road here in just a second. And we're back on Lake Woodlands. As you can see, um, even though we live in the woodlands, one would expect that there would be a lot of woods covering this course, and they are. They just seem to be just out of reach to provide uh, shade for you, especially when you're running in the middle of the afternoon. So even here when you turn left onto Panther Creek, you're on the road and the trees are quite far away that the sun can still be pretty brutal. So even though it's the woodlands, I'd say um, a good 80% of this course is, is not shaded. You do have one section coming up where you actually do run in through shade, which is kind of nice. Tip number three would be a fueling tip, and that would be to practice your race fueling plan to a T um, during training. And that race fueling plan includes your carbohydrate drink, a little bit of protein that you need on the bike, um, but not too much, not too much solid foods on the bike, no solid foods on the run, and then also um, plenty of fluid intake and then plenty of sodium intake. Those are your three biggies, grams of carbs or carbohydrates, sodium intake and fluids. Good rule of thumb is that you want to have at least 40 to 50 grams of carbs um, per bottle or per hour um, when you're training and racing and then at least 600 milligrams of sodium per hour all the way upwards of we've seen 2,000 even above that per hour as the um, sodium needs for athletes. And then fluids, at least, uh, at least 35, 40 ounces. That's kind of the minimum. All right, here we are moving through um, the pathway. You actually do run on the pathway. Um, this is a great section because it's when it's sunny out, it's, it's covered, um, so you get some shade. At nighttime, it's very dark, so make sure if you're running uh, at nighttime that you plan to bring some headlights because they, don't, they have a hard time getting lights in there. This is what's called South Shore Park. This is aid station number four. And now you're going over the bridge over um, Lake Woodlands or where the Lake, Lake Woodlands ends. And now you're running on the pathway again, headed into East Shore Park. East Shore Park is beautiful, it has lots of homes, but it is also brutal because there are very few spectators out there. Um, everybody just wants to hang out on the waterway and eat and drink there. And it's very sunny too. And it just feels like it goes on forever because you meander through, which is what you're about to see. You meander kind of off to the left and then you're going to come back to this road here in just a little bit. Um, so here we go. We turn left, and then we're going to come back to that main road. So this section, by far, is the section that athletes that have raced this many times would say is is one of the most the, the toughest part of the of the run. They just want to get onto the waterway where there's electricity and spectators. We def definitely recommend that you go through a heat acclimatization period. Um, four to six weeks out is a good time to start that, and that's where you just train in hot climates, at least 75 up to 85 degrees, um, whether that's riding indoors in a trainer with long sleeves on, no fan, um, whether that's running indoors on a treadmill, obviously, um, with the temperature turned up a little bit um, without a fan, or even swimming in a little bit warmer water. All of those will help get your body a little bit um, more accustomed to the heat and acclimated better. Even athletes, I love this, there's a taco truck here. You won't see that on race day, um, nor will you probably want to. This was shot a few years ago. I'm recording this in 2015. This was shot in 2012, and most of this construction is done. Um, there's another aid station right here. I recommend you get fueling right here because you have 1.2 miles once you get onto the waterway before you have another aid station. Um, Iron Man's unable to get a full aid station onto the waterway, so they put one right at the end before you get onto the waterway, and then all the way after you exit the waterway at the Anadarko building will be your next one. So you have a long stretch here, um, a little bit longer than the other um, aid station um, breaks. 
This part's fun. Everybody's yelling. Again, everybody's crazy. It's much easier to run here just because there's so much electricity and it, people will yell at you if you're walking or if you're looking um, downtrodden, they'll try and pick you up. Pick you up. Just remember you want to focus on the three things that you can control on race day. And this is across the, from the swim to the bike to the run. You want to focus on your pacing plan. The best executed pacing plans for Ironman are definitely where the bike, the output, whether that's heart rate or power or a combination of both, is steady across, across the bike. Um, if anything, we want to see that power come up a little bit at the end. Definitely not start too high and then, and then peter off. And then same with heart rates. If we start way too high, all we're gonna we're gonna just be unable to recruit blood volume and to fire the muscles, and heart rate's gonna go down, power's gonna go down by the end of the bike. So definitely a nice steady output on the bike, um, followed by a steady output on the run. Here we are. There's an aid station right here. This is the Anadarko building that you run around, um, and then we're about to turn down a street and then around a building and then head back onto the waterway. Here's where there's been construction. Once we get to this section in 2015, they had a major detour due to um, a second building going in. You can see right there. Um, so who knows what the waterway will have. There's always construction going on, but they always, they always adjust the course and figure it out and just make little minor changes. In 2015, they had us run down stairs and then to get back on the waterway, which you didn't see here. The scaffolding is gone, unfortunately. Provided nice shade. That was there two years, um, but that's gone. So now we're headed out um, on the waterway all the way down to Landry's. We call it the Landry's turnaround here. Um, athletes run down one side and then come back down the other side. Usually they have the athletes coming back along to the right, the, the section there that is on the waterway. So this section is nice. You can see your friends. You can see other competitors. There we go. Corey just turned around. Um, they could have you come back right here, both sections going on this on this, on this this um concrete section, or they could have the return out there closer to the waterway. So just be ready for anything. They plan that the week out, the actual final layout of the course. Okay, back to the, to the three things you can um, focus on. Pacing, fueling, and mental are the three things. Pacing we talked about. Um, loops two and three here, you go straight. Finish line will go up the ramp and then along, around to the movie theater to finish. For the run, um, you def we definitely want to see a steady heart rate across the run. That is what produces the best Ironman outcomes. It's for whatever reason, um, mostly because we've come off the bike fatigued and glycogen depleted. Um, we want to see a nice steady heart rate and um, even allow for a little bit of a pace drop off. So nice, steady um, output. Want to focus on your pacing, want to focus on your fueling, keep carbohydrates coming in, keep fluids coming in, keep sodium coming in. Especially at Ironman Texas, that's usually the limiter. Last thing, you can control your mental game. You can control your thoughts, you can control um, whether you're staying positive or not. And the last thing I'll leave you with is that Iron Man is um, long enough that you can fix mistakes. Any mistake you make, whether it's a pacing mistake, a fueling mistake, or even a mental mistake, it's long enough that you can reverse that trend. So if you get in a, if you get in a pinch um, fueling-wise, you're nauseous, you're throwing up, don't give up. Just try and take care of it. Slow down, walk, figure out, assess what you need, maybe switch to Coke for a little bit, and then go back to your fueling plan until your stomach settles. Um, but just relax and try and troubleshoot, try and solve the problem. Most problems can be fixed if if they are um, caught and then corrected quickly. And the best thing that you can do whenever you encounter any kind of problem is just slow down and think. If you can't think clearly, then you're probably not fueled properly. So if you can just slow down, get some carbohydrates in, get some fluids in, get sodium in, typically you can reverse whatever issue you're having and figure it out. So anyhow, I hope this helped. Um, again, email me, um, contact us at the, at the website, outrivalracing.com, and then on the homepage, there is um, a section where you can email me. Again, my name is Michelle LeBlanc. I'm a coach with Outrival Racing, and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, hope this helped. Thanks.